Hi, I'm Jeannie. Welcome to Mimi Craft, your home for all things creative and DIY on a budget. I make all the mistakes so you don't have to. Hello, Mimi Crafters and all potential Mimi Crafters. If you're liking my content, please do all the things. Now, on to the projects. First, we're going to recycle a Dollar Tree mirror uh, using tumbling tower blocks and some paint. Here you can see I'm changing the color from black to white with some chalk paint and then applying some Mod Podge to seal it. Where the built-in hanger is, I glued two tumbling tower blocks right on top of that with some hot glue and then added four tumbling tower blocks to, I'll call them the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock spots on the back of the mirror. I marked off the center of each of these tumbling tower block stacks, and I also made a pumper, paper, pumper? paper template um, marking the center just to keep me honest. I glued 12 sets of three tumbling tower blocks end to end. Four sets of four tumbling tower blocks end to end. And four sets of two tumbling tower blocks. And then I also used four single blocks. You may notice that the color is a little bit different. I used a very light oak stain on these blocks, but after I put this whole project together, I did not like it, and I went back to the natural color. First, I dry fit eight of the three block, I don't know, sticks to the mirror, as so. I'll show you a couple different views. And I used one tumbling tower block as a spacer for the width. For video purposes, I used hot glue, but I really would recommend wood glue because you are gluing wood to wood. You're gluing to that wood stack that we put underneath. Here's a side view of the placement. You put the spacer right dead center of the box underneath and glue them down. And then let them dry before you turn it. It should look something like that. Next, I made another spacer, gluing tumbling tower blocks together like this. Yes, my paper template is crooked. I'm going to take your spacer, put it right up against the mirror, and that'll help you to see where your first set of blocks is going to go. We're going to start out with the fours, center it exactly. Then the three. Then the two. For the singles, I just made sure that the black was centered and flush with the end of um, the two vertical three black sections. should be in the Craft Olympics. And this is how it looked, but it's going to need a hanger because we covered the original hanger up. So I'm going to use about a, I don't know, inch and a half piece of twine, flipping things over. And I'm going to glue the twine to one of the blocks. First thing you do is just put some hot glue on either end of the piece of twine. secure it down, and then flood it with hot glue to make it strong. And then repeat for the left side. Yeah, I had to trim that up a little bit. Sorry. So it was about a about an inch, inch to inch and a quarter, I'm guessing, piece. Okay. Inch. Glue it down. 
replace it, don't burn yourself. And flood it with hack glue. And make sure that that glue is completely cool before you to try and hang it up. And this is how it turned out. There's no stain and it's been thoroughly sanded. I added another hanger so I could also hang this like a letter X. Curiosity set in and I wonder what this design would look like if I flipped all those little contraptions around. So I did that, glued them directly onto the mirror frame right above the original hanger all the way around. And it turned out like this. And then I tried it as a letter X. Then I added an extra block to either end of every single row. And this is how it looks hanging on an angle. Let me know in the comments below which of these six different views do you like the best? to see how this would look on this Dollar Tree frame and I had already used it in another project so first thing I needed to do was to take the hanger off. You'll see the hanger still on later in the video but this is what I should have done in the first place. I glued a block over where the hanger was because the hanger was now going to need to be higher to accommodate the new design. Here I'm placing the new hanger on top of that block. Should have done it at the very end. Don't do it now because you're going to want the project to lay flat as you're making it. Next, I glued two blocks in each corner to give myself some gluing space for the design. I made sure it was completely flush with the frame. I like to sand all my pieces before I glue them on. I think it makes the whole project look so much better. For this project, off camera, I made double the sets of blocks uh, than I did for the first project. 24 sets of three, eight sets of four, eight sets of two, and eight singles. I filled in any spaces with a little bit of wood glue and then just brushed the sawdust right in there. I turn the project right side up to begin gluing. You can see why you need that hanger off. It doesn't lay flat with the hanger there. I put glue on the very ends and just like with the other project, we're going to use a block as a spacer. The first set of three was glued one spacer in. As you see here on screen, put a bunch of glue on there and attached it. And then I used that spacer block to space in between. I repeated for the right side. I used a square to make sure everything was nice and straight. After this was dry, I turned it back over and I used some hot glue to reinforce those joints with toothpicks. You could do that with skewers as well. I did not do that for the rest of the project and it all seemed to hold together pretty well, so this step may be optional. I'll leave it up to you.
When this was completely dry, the glue had completely cooled, I turned it back over to its right side to continue gluing my other pieces. Using the spacer I had created earlier, I began gluing the pieces in place. I put the, sp the spacer directly up against the frame, and then this time I'm using wood glue. Place the wood glue, and then centered a four black piece right on top of that glue. On the right side, I glued a single block parallel to the set of four so that the design on the right side would be going in the opposite direction. I continued gluing in the same pattern using the spacer except for the very end pieces. repeated for the other three sides. And here's the finished product. I started by gluing together 14 sets of three blocks as seen on screen. Next, I glued together 34 sets of four. I glued two sets of four, edge to edge. Then glued four sets of four, edge to edge. These will be the first two sides. I filled in all the spaces with wood glue and sawdust. Now if you're gonna paint or stain your project, you can certainly use wood filler. It's just with the glue and sawdust, you're gonna have a perfect color match every time. Next, I made a three-sided box with one set of four and two sets of three and glued them together as shown. I glued the open sides of this box to the sides I created earlier. Again, I filled in gaps. I made another three-sided box and glued it as seen on screen. I glued four four block sections end to end. Again, I filled in the gaps. I then glued the four tier side to the open box. I made 
made another three-sided box. I suppose I could have made all the three-sided boxes at once, but I didn't. I glued that box here. Next was a six-tiered wall. I made another box and I glued it onto the four-tier wall before I realized my mistake. You'll see me added, adding the other two tiers to the wall after I glue the box on. Crisis averted. Another box added to the top of this wall. I made and glued on another wall of six. And added two boxes to that. Place this last box lower than I did here. That didn't work out to be a very good spot. There wasn't much room. Learn from my mistakes. Last but not least, I added a wall of five. clear wax to seal this project and I found it a whole lot easier than the Mod Podge. I may continue doing this. Here it is during the day with some succulents in it. I put in a combination of both Dollar Tree and Amazon succulents. I'll leave you a link in the description box. I just think it's so sweet. I'm really in love with it. And this is how it looks at night with some battery operated votives and tea lights. I started with eight blocks, gluing them in an L shaped pattern. I made a total of eight of these. I glued two L's together, like this, for each side. I glued 10 blocks together in this pattern for a base. I place wood glue on the inside bottom of one of the sides and firmly attached it to the outside of the base. I glued the opposite side the same way but in the opposite direction. When 
gluing the other two sides, I matched them up to the sides they're already glued. It's easiest just to watch the video. For each of the last two sides, after I glued them, I placed a heavy book on top of them until they were dry. I glued 14 blocks together in this pattern to make a lid. The pillar candle I had was too short, so I made a stand for it like this. Here's a daytime look. This is how it looks with a battery operated candle at night. I love how it looks different from every angle. And here's the lantern and the stand together. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so now. Let me know in the comments below which one of these projects was your favorite. Until the next time, bye!